Good morning, everyone. Today uh, is a special Sunday. It's, uh, it's that one time of year that we, we take to uh, commemorate Remembrance Day here at Steel Heights. And so um, as we get started, I'd like to invite you all to stand as we sing uh, our nation's anthem, the O Canada. One of, the, uh, one of the many reasons that we celebrate Remembrance Day is, um, is to pass on to the next generation um, the history and the, the stories and the appreciation for what's being done. Um, much as like we see in the Old Testament with Israel, um, always trying to pass on the, the knowledge and the, the, the verbal stories uh, the oral history and the tradition to the next generation. And so we have an example of that actually um, today. There's a poem that I'd like to read from, uh, from, a, young, from a young girl, a 13 year old uh, Molly uh, Duplessis. She's a uh, grand, granddaughter of uh, John and Kathy Neufeld. And she wrote a poem. Uh, it's very, uh, very touching and I'd like to read it. It's called They Fought for Us. Goes like this. They fought for us so we could go to school and learn, so we could have a job and earn. They fought for us, and in return, young men passed away. Loved ones cried for days. Tragic memories haunted and never went away. They fought for us. And in the end, doctors looked in dismay at the state of disarray the battlefield was in. Bodies laid and blood stained. The rusty barbed wire fence. They fought for us, so we honor them in the moment of silence. On Remembrance Day. They fought for us, so on November 11th, think of all they have done. They died for us. That is true love. And so I'd like to uh, invite you to take a minute of silence as we remember the fallen.
I'd like to uh, invite my friend John forward to place a wreath in honor of Remembrance Day and uh, join me in a prayer. Lord Jesus, today we remember your sons and daughters that were your children that you loved, that out of love for their nation, out of love for us, gave their lives. And your word tells us that there's no greater love than that. And so this, this day is so important, not just for them and their memory, but also because it points to you. And anything good and anything um, glorious and honorable will always point to you, God. Because you are the, the grand narrative in all of our small narratives here on earth. And so the sacrifice that, uh, that we Remember on Remembrance Day, it's about you. It's, it's a picture of you and what you did for us. And uh, let, us not, let us not limit our remembrance of, of your mercy and grace and your sacrifice to one day a year. But every day, remember that we live because you died in our place. God, I thank you for this nation. I thank you that we can stand here freely and honor you freely because the work you did on that cross finished it all. So bless us, Lord. Bless, uh, bless the families of the fallen. Keep them close to you and And bless us on this Remembrance Day. In your son's name, I pray. Amen. Let's continue in worship, singing about God's goodness, love, and mercy. Oh, Lord, you're my shepherd. You make me die in fields of green. You lead me by the still waters. You restore righteousness to me. Though I walk through the valley, I will fear no evil thing. For you are with me, and you comfort me. Sure Follow wherever I go. Surely goodness, love, and mercy will follow wherever I go. Surely goodness, love, and mercy will follow wherever I go. You make me lie in fields of green. You lead me by the still waters. You restore righteousness to me. Though I walk through the valley, I will fear no evil thing. For you are with me. Follow wherever I go. 
his one and only Son to save. For God so loved the world that he gave us his one. Amen. Please be seated. Well, we enjoyed a nice fellowship meal in between the services up in the gym, and we are celebrating the Lord's Supper today, the first Sunday of the month, as is our custom. And in November, often remembrance, uh, well, off, uh, our communion time is often on the same time we commemorate uh, Remembrance Day here at Still Heights as well. And it's, um, it's quite evident that there's a lot of similarities or there's a lot of parallels when you think of Remembrance Day and you think of communion. Um, there's sacrifice, there's freedom, there's life, there's death, there's shed blood. Um, but where the analogy breaks down is that what Christ did on the cross, no army on earth could accomplish what he did for us. He defeated the final enemies of sin and death through his sacrificial death on the cross. And the atonement that was accomplished through the shedding of his blood and the breaking of his body, um, it's applied to us. He did it on our behalf. He he went to the cross for us because he was without sin. Christ didn't need forgiveness, but we do. And it's through his sacrifice and our faith in Christ as our Lord and Savior that we have forgiveness for our sins and we have the hope of eternal life through Christ. And so that's why this is such a meaningful time for Christians to come and remember. And the Lord commanded us to remember because... We have bad memories, and we, we forget, and things uh, get good sometimes in life, and we forget about our need and our dependence upon God, and we forget about the great sacrifice that Jesus accomplished for us. Well, if you didn't happen to pick up a communion cup on the way into the sanctuary, just put up your hand, and uh, one of the ushers will come and bring you a cup. And just uh, if you've never used these uh, cups and, uh, and wafers before, there's two tabs on the, on the top. Pull the, the clear plastic one first. That'll get you the bread. And then the foil, the purple foil one, will get to you to, to the juice. All right. Well, let me read to you from 1 Corinthians 11 as the Apostle Paul uh, prepares us for this communion table. For I receive from the Lord, said Paul, what I also pass on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Jesus said, Do this in remembrance of me. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your body that you willingly laid down on the cross and you were lifted up. And because you were lifted up on that cross, 
God, you secured for us a way of salvation through you, Jesus, and your sacrifice. So we remember your body that was nailed to that cruel cross, God. We love you, and we thank you that you love us. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat of this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Our Lord and Savior said, do this in remembrance of me. Lord Jesus, once again, we pray to you, saying thank you. We are so grateful that through your blood we have the forgiveness of our sins. That you take them, Lord, and you choose to remember them no more. And we stand right before you, God, because of the righteousness that's in you. So, Lord Jesus, thank you. Thank you that you washed our sins away. Though they be red as scarlet, they're made white as snow through your precious blood that was shed on the cross. Lord Jesus, we look forward to when you will come again and you will take us home to be with you eternally. Oh, Lord, we bless you and we say we love you and we thank you. We pray these things in your name. Amen. Time thing, but look at all you guys. You look rested from that extra hour, maybe except for the parents. It's all good. Well, if you are new to Steel Heights, if uh, you're visiting, it's your first time here, um, we want to welcome you here. We are glad that you are here, um, and we would love to connect with you more and get to know you more. And to help us out with that, we have these handy dandy Neato connection cards that are located in the seat back pocket in front of you. If you fill that out and bring that to one of the pastors over at the welcome desk, just around the corner in the foyer, we are going to give you a, a gift of your own. And it's like, it's, it's very nice. Um, and uh, in addition to that, that pastor that's there will be able to answer any questions that you may have about Steel Heights. And if you're joining us online for worship, we want to welcome you and thank you for joining us. Um, if you want to let us know that uh, you, you came by and you were joining us, please feel free to email the office at office at shbc.ca and we'll get back to you and ask any, or answer any questions that you may have. Um, if you've been here for a while, the connection card is also a great tool uh, to find out more information about things like baptism and membership. You can also send in prayer requests as well using that card. So a lot of uses for that card. The Well is hosting another online testimony event tonight. So this is a chance for you to grab uh, a cup of your favorite beverage Personally, I'm a Hocho kind of guy, so uh, if that's you, that's what you can grab. You can log on to Zoom and just enjoy this uh, time uh, of testimony uh, from the comfort of your own home. We'll be hearing from Maureen Shantag that evening, and the Zoom, in, the Zoom login information has been emailed out, but you can also go on the Wells Facebook page to get the Zoom link. Uh, well, why don't you join me as we pray for the offering? God, you are the giver of good gifts. Um, and we're reminded that uh, you gave us Jesus Christ to, to reconnect us to you. Uh, and we thank you for the peace that that brought to our lives. 
So God, as we um, give our offerings, as we reflect your generosity, I pray that they would be used uh, to share your love, your peace, and your grace to the world around us. Amen. Well, we want to teach you a new song, a song that speaks of God's goodness, his faithfulness throughout our lives. And as we've started this winter season, I know there's going to be some days come January, February, where it feels like winter just never ends. And, and so it is. With, with, uh, it can be like that in our spiritual lives where we go through struggles and it feels like it never ends. But God's always there. And spring comes. And God, if we trust in His promises and if we keep our eyes on Him, uh, we can see God's goodness through our lives and how He carries us through. So the song's called Evidence. Uh, it was written by Josh Baldwin a couple of years ago. It came out during the pandemic, and it said that just brought a whole new realization to him through some of those struggles. And yet he looks back and he sees how God's just taken care of him. So I hope this, this song um, touches your hearts like it uh, has ours over the last couple of weeks as we've heard it for the first time. Evidence. So, here's a problem. If I don't plug my ears in, I hear absolutely nothing. And the rest of the band's looking at me like, why are you hitting all these buttons for? Everything's good. Sorry, guys. Okay, here we go. Evidence. You know what? We're finished with offering. Why don't you stand and join us as we sing this? Here we go. All throughout my history, your faithfulness has walked beside me. The winter storms made way for spring. In every season, from where I'm standing, I see the evidence of your goodness all over my life, all over my life. I see your promises in fulfillment all over my life, all over my life. Help me remember when I'm weak Fear may come but fear will leave You lead my heart to victory You are my strength and you always will be I see the evidence of your goodness all over my life, all over my life. I see your promises in fulfillment. All over my life, all over my life. See the cross, the empty grave, the evidence is endless. All my sin rolled away Because of you, oh Jesus See the cross, the empty grave The evidence is endless All my sin rolled away Because of you, oh Jesus Oh, I see the evidence of your goodness all over my life, all over my life. I see your promises in fulfillment. All over my life, all over my life. I see the evidence of your goodness. All over my life. I see your promises 
promises and fulfillment all over my life, all over my life. So why should I fear? The evidence is here. morning. Good morning. It's good again uh, to be in the presence of God and uh, thank you everybody for coming. So today we are going to talk about praying in the spirit. Open your Bible if you can, um, the book of uh, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. Pray in the Spirit at all times with every kind of prayer and request. Likewise, be alert with your most diligent efforts and pray for all the saints. So, praying in the Spirit. So, if we say praying in the Spirit, meaning also there is also praying out of the Spirit. As you can imagine, hundreds, thousands of people are gathering for praying. But God knows those who are praying in the Spirit and those who are just praying because of the ritual of their background or religion. So praying in the Spirit, it is to connect with God. So we can pray thousands of prayers but if we are not connected with God, it's meaningless, pointless. But praying in the Spirit is when you connect with God, you pray, and God answers your prayers, listens to you. I don't mean to give you material what you want, but I meant so when you Pray, God listen, this is my son who's praying. And today, because God is not limited with English, so we will have people praying in different languages. So God listens all the languages. And we never know what kind of language in heaven we'll be speaking. Probably it's my language. You gotta come close to me. You gotta come close to me, then I start teaching you my language how to say, Praise God. So we never know what kind of language you will be speaking, but so the most important, God can listen your language. So you don't need um, to enhance English to communicate with God, you only need uh, English to take courses or order pizza. <laughs> so, but uh, if you're going to connect with God, you can use your mother language. So I'm going to ask Pastor Darren to help us with uh, people who are ready and who are going to pray with us, for us, in uh, different languages. What what language are you gonna pray in? Uh, I'm, 
I'm going to pray with the Kinyamlenge. And then uh, after you pray, just give us a short uh, summary in English after you pray in your language. Yes. Thank you, Emmanuel. Uh, let us pray in my language, and then I'm going to explain it a little bit. Eh? Tragushimie uhora homana muriki kitondo chumusi. Urakwiriye uruokwize rwa imigambi ya wirakome. Irutuko tuitekeleza. Duchie bugufi imbere ya wemana. Ngutkoheleze muka wera awashe kuhindura imitekeleza ya chu. Imikorele ni mivugile ni migendele. Ubugiza ugawe bubane natwe. Usange avicha ya hanu. Ubamurikile. Ubagendele. Awafiti wiwazo. Awafiti ngorane. Awarushe. Aware merewe, ndawa kwele semana, ngubgiza wugawe gururuki, uhindu rekandi bule memana. Ushimwe kuko, utugiri enezi kikitondo, umuvuga butungu gekuri, kufuga, umugendelele, umuhijambo, lihindu ra imitima yachu, awisha iba hindu rugwe nao, ubgami wugawe buze tugendele mo, kandi mngami, tukize kubasha kukora, ibiru tibzo tutekeles, nibzo tukibgira, wakuku imbara gazawe zingana. Ushimwe gitare chachu, Ishimwe nidia kuzake ziteka Dios. Amen. Amen. Uh, the, I can explain a little bit. So I say, uh, let us, the Holy Spirit, come on this place. They touch everyone. They, they, and then they, they can, the Holy Spirit, they can meet our problem. The, the, someone who needs the Holy Spirit, they can touch him. They can. They, I know, you know, and then they pray for a uh, servant of God to to lead him to to give the good word to 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 transform to transform it our life. Amen. Yes. Thank you. Anyone else? Peter. Uh, this is in Deutsch, German, my first language. Pray with me. <coughs> Vater unser im Himmel, geheiligt werde dein Name. Dein Reich komme, dein Wille geschehe, wie im Himmel, so auf Erden. Unser tägliches Brot gib uns heute und vergib uns unsere Schuld, wie auch wir vergeben unseren Schuldigern. Und führe uns nicht in Versuchung, sondern Erlöse uns von dem Bösen, denn dein ist das Reich und die Kraft und die Herrlichkeit in Ewigkeit. Amen. It's the Lord's Prayer that all of you know and internalize and it encompasses everything. Thank you, Peter. Anyone else pray in their language? All right. Dima. Uh, Ukrainian. Мій небесний батько, я дякую тобі за твою любов, яку ти даєш через твоїх людей, через твою церкву. Дякую тобі за твою благодать, яку ти, для, яку ти дав для нас. Дякую за прощення гріхів. Будь ласка, збережи нашу Україну. Будь, будь, ласка, будь, будь ласка, з нашими солдатами. Дякуємо тобі за все, що ми маємо тут, через цих людей. Амінь. Uh, sorry for my English. <laughs> uh, I say, uh, my Heavenly Father, I thank you for your people here, for, for uh, everything what we have through the, these people, through the, this, through the your church, and uh, save Ukraine, save Ukrainian soldiers. Uh, thank you for your grace for us. Something like that. Thank you. Anyone else? You want to pray? Yeah? John, Joseph. Uh, I will say to my language, yes. Kibembe. Okay. Yeah, oh. pray, yeah, from Congo. Yeah. Tua una abe chapungu amalango. Bichangeti bino, tuaswa kilo mangi, wana mbaya mchunge, tuikilile utu itila vya manga. Watu atilicha, tuomatu, atumutanyata njela chami, tukali, 
cheki na manage lakini watu atiliche ni changa tole hano tuikilele ondele tu atiliche na bio si bio tenjo hano bibi mietu mitema tuikilele ubi mbumba wetu imsosu wa bio si tokanya manga uchina lobe yesu kilisitu amen thank you did you want to Translate that, Pastor Nelson? Mm, I didn't catch <laughs> everything. <laughs> Do you want to try, John? English is bad. <laughs> okay, that's all right. God bless you. So, God is not limited with our languages and differences. Uh, any language you speak, as long as you are connecting with God, that's good. If there is anyone left, you want to pray in your language, I'm going to give you one minute. Okay, I'm assuming uh, we can move forward. So praying is connecting with God. So let's go to the next slide. So when we pray in the spirit, we are connecting with God. It's not just Praying because we are used, we have been trained to pray. So there is nothing wrong to be trained to pray. But the most important is when you pray, if you get connected with God. Jeremiah said, call to me and I will answer you and tell you great things and unreachable things you do not know. So, meaning when you pray, when you open your mouth, when you are connected to God, God knows who's calling, who's trying to connect with him. So, allow me to, to use this illustration of our cell phones when we try to reach out to our friends or relatives. Sometimes you can call the number and you'll be told this number is disconnected. This number is not in service. This number is busy. Let's apply this to our spiritual journey. Sometimes we are so busy with other things. And when God tries to connect with us, we are busy. We are disconnected. And we are not available. Because the things of the world, material things. And some are busy because God has blessed them abundantly. So they don't need God. Because if you are sick, you go to the hospital... If the doctor is not able to treat you, they, they have a way of sending you to a specialist. So, you have almost everything you need. And then this creates a spirit of dependence. You are no longer depending on God because you have everything you need. But when you are in the spirit, you will know that regardless of what I have, regardless of uh, uh, material things I have, I still need to be connected with God. There is a time I was trying to do evangelism in Quebec, and uh, so this guy told me, listen, so this God, is for, this God is for you Africans who have a lot of problems. I don't need God. I have everything I need. So if God is there, so I don't care. If God is not there, I don't need him at all. Because of the wealth and the system of having almost everything we need. So we tend to forget and take things for granted. And we disconnect ourselves with God. But when you are in the spirit, you will know that. So the material thing should not prevent you to be connected with God. So next slide. When we pray in the spirit, 
we enhance our relationship with God. So I tried to pick a few words. What does it mean praying in the spirit? So one, I said it's to be connected with God. So two, to fix a broken relationship. So we enhance our relationship with God. So it's not easy to be in a family of God. And there is no relationship between you and the creator. So it doesn't help anyone if your relationship with God is broken. Isaiah stated that uh, when you read Isaiah 29 verse 13, this is what he said. These people, so they are mine, they honor me with their lips but their heart are far from me. So they're not in the spirit. So when they come for gathering, for praying, so they're only using the, the words and their lips, but their hearts are so far. So praying in the spirit is connecting with God, is coming close to God. You are not far from him because you are praying in the spirit. When you open your mouth to pray, he said, yes, because I can see your heart, you are connected to me. So, and when they try to worship, they have memorized prayers, but their hearts are so far. But praying in the spirit, our hearts are connected with God. Let's move to the next slide. So we are not only encouraged to pray in the Spirit, but also to walk in the Spirit. And Paul said, Walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the last of the flesh. Walk in the Spirit. So not only pray in the spirit, but also walk in the spirit. So then you will not fulfill the last of the flesh. So when you try to analyze the society we are in worldwide, from Canada to other countries, you'll find that so we have disconnected to God because of the material things. Not only that. So if you look what happened in Sodom and Gomorrah, so the sins of Sodom and Gomorrah, we are not far from them. So the sins they committed over there, that's the same thing in our sanctuary people are committing. So meaning we are disconnecting ourselves with God. And when we disconnect with God, we make ourselves, we make ourselves a small God. Because if it doesn't please you, so why are you in it? So you find that those sins that Sodom and Gomorrah committed which is promoting the homosexual, les, les, lesbian and the gays, so, and the LGBTs. So these are contexts of social justice, not a spiritual justice. Spiritual justice is, so you have to connect with God. And the social justice has to include everybody, regardless of their choices or genders. Under human rights and women's rights, we have killed unborn babies. So women have a decision to make a decision, have rights to make a decision to remove the babies. And then we use it under freedom of women, their, their rights. They have rights to do whatever they want. 
But when we go to the context of spiritual, are we allowed to do those things? The answer is no. Because we depend on God and we have to follow what God is saying. But because we have disconnected ourselves, so we feel we are allowed to do things we want. And the Bible says, to those who accepted him, he gave them power to be called the sons of God. So in another way, we have to behave like our father is. So he has called us, and we should work in the spirit. And then we will please him. I give an example to my colleagues. Uh, my colleagues uh, at work, they are some um, Muslims. And then during the break time, they decided to go and pray. So they went in the room, they left me in the office. After a few minutes, I had Nelson, Nelson. So they came to me, I said, okay, what can I do for you? Where is East? Where is East? What's the problem? No, we, we are trying to pray, but we have to focus. Uh, we have to direct our prayers going to East. Well, I looked at them. I said, okay, you don't need to focus East. Just focus up and pray. I confuse them the most. <laughs> so, Prayer is addressed to God. It doesn't matter what kind of position you're in. You don't have to face east, west, north, south. No. It's your heart. Is your heart connected to God? Is your heart deeply connected to him? Oh, you are just attending service because this is how you have been used to. This is how your parents trained you. Don't misunderstand me. It's good to train a child in the way that you parents want, but it's meaningless if they are not connected to God. Can I hear big amen? amen. Big amen again. Amen. So it's good to live in a good family, well, well trained, having good manners, but it's meaningless. If our children and ourselves, we are not connected to God. So let's move to the last slide. So what to do when you feel disconnected from God? What do you do? So the, the answer is simple. Try to connect. If you know that you have been disconnected with God, so it's easy for you to try to connect with God. And then you can pray. Daniel's prayer, when you read the book of Daniel, chapter 9, verse 5, he confessed the sins. He said, we, our parents, we, we committed sins against you. And the Bible says, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves, turn away from their wicked ways, and the promise is, I, God, will hear from heaven. Forgive their sins and heal their land. So this is what we have to do as believers. Not only going to church and remain the same. No, we have to change and be transformed and be connected with God. When you are connected with God, so you will not compromise with what you believe. I'm going to invite the uh, praise and the worship team as we pray together. 
Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we pray that uh, you would forgive our sins and so you will encourage us to be connected with you, to pray in the Spirit, to walk in the Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you stand and sing with us, please? Heavenly Father, we pray that as we leave this place, we will remain connected with you. Walk in the Spirit and guided by the Holy Spirit. Father, I pray that you would protect your children and your presence will be with them. May God bless you and keep you and keep his face shining upon you. You are blessed indeed. God bless you.